Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 13 of Let's Talk About It. Today, I sat down with Tanya Pollan. I've known Tanya for a few years now. She is also, like me, a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, and I was very interested to discuss her journey a little bit further to bring it to light to some of you guys who may also be serial entrepreneurs, because I believe that Tanya's story is very inspiring. Um, and it's fascinating just to see where her creative ideas have taken her, where they are taking her, um, as well as an interesting and insightful discussion in what it, what it means to be an entrepreneur, uh, a small business owner versus seeking employment as someone who identifies with being an entrepreneur um, and kind of that discussion around um, employment versus being self-employed. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this podcast episode. Please don't forget to like this episode, subscribe, share with any friends who you feel like could benefit from it. And also there is a special little discount code for Better Mix down in the show notes. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About It. I am here with Tanya Pollan. And Tanya, we have known each other throughout the years for a multitude of different reasons. Um, but I've also witnessed your entrepreneurial journey. And so that's kind of the main reason why I'm like so excited to have this conversation with you today, because you have so much experience in so many different like sectors of, you know, creating your own business, working for other people and what have you. So this is going to be a really cool conversation. Awesome. Yeah. I'm excited to talk more about it. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about, um, where it all began for you, I guess, with your career. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I guess this like whole entrepreneurship thing came right after I was moving back from Europe. Um, I played volleyball, as you know, overseas for a few years, and I really had that flexible lifestyle. Um, you know, I was doing like some training in the morning at nighttime, and I had the whole day to myself, and I really liked that. So once I, you know, retired, I guess you can call it from the sport and moved to Halifax, I wanted to create a very similar lifestyle for myself. Um, and, you know, you, I, I was seeing all those, those ads and those people talking to like, you know, on Instagram saying, you know, if you want that flexible lifestyle, you got to run your own business, um, that kind of stuff. So I, I was like, all right, that's what I got to do. Um, but also I, I definitely had the motivation, like the passion to, to start something from scratch. Um, so that's where my first business <laughs> started. Uh, it was just a simple idea. I had, um, I was having, I was making these like energy balls while I was an athlete and I really liked them, but they're time consuming to make. And as much as if you look at my Instagram or anyone that, I, like sees my online presence would assume that I love to cook and be in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah. the opposite. I end up in the kitchen because um, that's kind of how you eat healthy food, I guess. Um, you know, it's, it's harder to get some good quality foods takeout or directly from the store. So yeah, we just make my own energy balls. And then um, I, I realized that like I wanted to just like buy them and I realized that there really weren't any products on the market that were up to like my standards so I was like all right let's just start this and start an energy ball company <laughs> so that was business number one yeah <laughs> I remember when you started doing that too because you were you were going to the Halifax market right on Saturdays to sell them exactly that's how it all started well that's like honestly if you do want to start a business and a food product like that that is by far the the, the easiest uh like lowest budget uh way to start it is just create the product book a table at the farmer's market and get your product in front of people and start gathering like feedback essentially because honestly from day one at the farmer's market and even when I got into retail later on the product had changed and evolved a lot over those even if it was just a few months so that farmer's market experience was so good because I was seeing customers every single weekend and talking to them and was able to grow the business um, faster I think that way that makes sense to me so just when you said that I'm curious about what's it like when you have 
your original idea of like, this is what Tanya wants, like in terms of the ingredients or, you know, what the, what that product looks like versus these are what my clients or customers want. Did you notice that there was a difference there or anything like that? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. I think the brand that I created really attract the customers that I wanted to attract. Mm. Uh, so the product that I wanted to create, I was able to attract customers that wanted that exact same product. So it's very interesting because down the road, as I was trying to expand that business, one of the things that kept coming up was the shelf life of the product. Right. Um, and when I was seeking like expert advice on how to prolong that shelf life, it was always okay, especially just we we just don't around here we just don't really have the expertise unfortunately um I know it's possible and I was like how can we do this and um what I was getting is just like preservatives you know mm. and I knew that first of all I didn't want to do this but anytime I would be at the farmer's market talking to my customers about it they were on the same page um so it's kind of that balance because the, the the business worked really well at the farmer's market I made the product a few days after I went to the farmer's market I sold it and next week, the customers were coming back for more. So the product was consumed within a week. But then when you try to like go into retail, even just locally, the product is going to sit on the shelf a little bit longer. And then, of course, yeah. if you try to expand outside the city, then even more, right? So that's where it became a bit more difficult, for sure. Yeah, and I can understand that, too, like because obviously profits are important. Like you kind of need to make money if you're gonna if you're gonna have a business. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, yeah, I mean that would be the one thing that I I would probably advise anyone is I for a very long time I was like it's okay I'm not making money I'm not making money it's fun it's gonna come it's gonna come and I burnt myself out yeah. because I mean it's just not sustainable to work as much as I was working on this business and not take any profit I was just reinvesting it um but I think um I you know I should have structured the business a little bit differently where I was at least compensating myself for some of my time uh, but I really didn't have that in that initial I guess business plan it's like any profit we make we're just going to reinvest it and we're going to go quicker but at what point was I going to sneak in you know a salary for myself I don't know <laughs> oh I I feel that completely that's like a a really big like for me even personally with with different types of business ideas that's my issue as well that you know every cent that I have I put into the business and then I forget that like oh I should probably make sure I have enough money to like you know keep the heat on this month <laughs> or like buy groceries this month, you know, like personal self-care in order to like make the business viable. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's the thing you get motivated, you get like just focus on the business and you just want to reinvest it all. But just long-term it's, I don't find it very sustainable. Was that kind of the tipping point for you to like kind of leave that idea behind it was yeah because as I mentioned I wasn't taking any money from the business at all I really loved it it brought me like a lot of joy and all that but again it just wasn't paying like any of my bills uh, so I had to do other things so I I also had like another side business with thankfully that one's a little bit more passive um, so I was spending way less time on that one and that one was actually paying me so that was also like you know uh, a little bit of a light bulb moment at a certain point I'm like wait a minute why am I spending all this time on this one business that doesn't pay me and no time in this other business that actually pays me like should I be shifting my priorities <laughs> here um, I also had a full-time job at some point I was doing some business development for another startup food product company so now I was working nine to five helping this business, you know, like basically giving all my entrepreneurial energy to this business, this company. And I'd go home and I'm like, Hey, now I have to work on bites. And right. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Yeah. So eventually, <laughs> yeah. It's the shelf life thing is really where I just had to call it. We weren't really getting anywhere. And, and then, well, actually no. So then I, at that point I was like, okay, so this is the farmer's market business. Right. Um, and then COVID hit um, and the farmer's market shut down. I did it from home. Like my customers were just so wonderful. And 
day one of like the market shutting down they're like we'll come to you we'll drive to you just tell us like here's my order can I just come pick it up like at your apartment um and that worked for a little while but also just wasn't sustainable long term so eventually I just had to make the very difficult decision of closing the business okay so you closed it did you did you have other people take it over for a period of time or I definitely tried there again because there's just this great like clientele at the market I was trying to find someone that maybe would want that type of business just a small little market farmer's market business because it is it is actually really fun like I kind of enjoyed going to the farmer's market like mm-hmm. again maybe not forever but it was kind of fun like getting up early going to the farmer's market it's good vibes there like, yeah was, um got all my groceries while I was there like friends I don't know so especially being new to Halifax that is how you make friends start a business and go to the farmer's market. Like anyone I know, it's like pretty much everyone I know in Halifax, it's been through that company one way or another, which is crazy. So amazing. Um, yeah, that's that was kind of it. I did try to have someone to pick it up, but it didn't really work out. Um, and then I, again, I just ended up being like more work again, trying to like pass it on to someone. So I was like, okay, we're shutting it down. Like I wasn't even entertaining any offers at that point. I was just like, this is actually too much work. I am very tired. <laughs> So yeah. I can understand that. I find like, I don't know if, if, if you can speak to this too, it's when you start to bring other people into your business or to hand off or like delegate things um, to other people, it's really difficult when, um, how do I word this? Yeah. It's like, it is more work. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a whole, cause you're working in the business and you're working on the business because it's like, you kind of have that, you have to do a little bit of everything. Um, and it can be really kind of overwhelming sometimes to try 100%. to do that. Yeah. You yeah. can't just, you know, have someone come in and they're just gonna do exactly what you were doing. Like you have to train them. There's, there's, yeah, there's a lot involved for sure. So. Yeah. yeah. Did you, did you struggle with that? With like, like when when you had people come in to kind of like help you out with some things did you kind of like just here here's how you like this is what I want you to do now go do it or or did you really like you know stay on top of what was going on like what kind of leader or like owner (laughs) were you in that circumstance yeah great question um I did have so I had uh someone doing the farmer's market for me on Sunday so the farmer's market to, to go to the farmer's market in Halifax, you have to commit to both days, which oh. is quite the commitment, especially if you're already working that nine to five, Monday to Friday. Mm-hmm. So um, I ended up hiring someone to do that Sunday shift. But thankfully, it was one of my friends, someone that I already like knew and trusted. So it was just enough. I just gave her enough information that she felt comfortable in the role. Um, and then the rest is like, you're essentially you're at the farmer's market selling energy balls like don't stress <laughs> like you're yeah. gonna be okay like here's you know the frequently asked questions here's kind of like the setup I did the first few shifts with her uh but it's it's such a very it's a very like chill <laughs> setting so um yeah there wasn't too much there but that's like the extent of my experience of having employees or bringing people on, into the business so I haven't really had any experiences past that Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, I'm sure there's some people who are multi-passionate entrepreneurs or small business owners who are listening to this right now. And, um, that's like, to me personally, I found and still find to be one of the biggest challenges is how do you bring people into your business who are able to fulfill the task of what needs to be done in their own way because they're their own unique individual but without you having to feel like you need to hover over over them you know it's it's I still haven't figured out the art of how that's done (laughs) that's fair I mean I always hear that from whenever I'm watching like entrepreneurial motivational things um Mm -hmm. it's always saying like yeah build your team like that's going to be one of your like biggest assets I guess and I guess if you feel confident that this person, like, let's say, I don't know, you want to hire someone to manage your social media. Well, as much as we know a decent amount about doing that, there's definitely someone out there that specializes in that. And they may do it a little bit 
different than us, but it's probably better because they're an expert in that, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas for us, we do every part of the business, like accounting, (laughs) social (laughs) media, like product development, like, you know? So it's like, I think you just got to find that person, that right person where you're like, no, they're actually an expert in this field and um, they're they're better than I am. (laughs) Like I can probably learn from them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I understand that. So you have a full-time job right now as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot has happened since Byte. So (laughs) I've kind of learned from my experience but kind of didn't and I went ahead and started another food product business yes and I want you to talk about that too (laughs) yeah yeah so I mean that one basically is I did miss it uh but I just learned from some key things like the shelf life so I was like you know what I want to do this again but create a product that is a little bit more shelf stable I'm able to outsource all of the manufacturing um basically yeah I just I have the product created for me like I developed the product but then um, I have someone that manufactures the product it's shipped to me and then um, you know I just fulfill orders so it's right. not as nowhere near as hands-on as uh, Bites was so that I enjoy um, it's really fun but you know we're still in the middle of a pandemic and um, yeah you know food product businesses uh, are definitely the ones that have been his in all of this um so yeah I it was about eight months ago I was like you know what I'm gonna start focusing on an actual career in the form of like getting a nine to five and Mm -hmm. moving through that so yeah that um yeah, that, honestly, I, I didn't know what to think because I feel like I, I know it was what, like you're almost three years into this entrepreneurship thing. And, you know, everyone says you don't want to be, you know, nine to five, you're not going to be flexible, like you're not going to like your job. So many things. Right? I feel like I just I hear like negative things about it. So I was definitely yeah. scared about it. But I kind of love it, honestly. Um, you know, there's a paycheck coming in every two weeks. I don't have to stress about whether, you know, I'm selling some baking mixes or not. If I can pay my bills. Um, I just, I do my job and I get paid and that's <laughs> cool <laughs> because as you know, as an entrepreneur, you do your job and a million more. And sometimes that, that doesn't mean you're going to get paid, you know? Yeah. But it's stressful for sure. And the structure, the team aspect, like it is so nice as an entrepreneur, again, like, as we mentioned, we, we didn't really have a, we don't have a big team or anything. So we work alone uh, most of the time mm-hmm. and it's really nice to hop on meetings. I'm like, Oh, people cool. Hi, we're working on this together. <laughs> like I'm not the only one trying to get this project done or whatever it may be. Right. So there's a lot of aspects of this nine to five job that I, I really like it even sounds to me like it's I've been t- I mean during a pandemic where isolation and loneliness have become like you know increasingly common and have aggravated or exacerbated a lot of like mental health concerns for people um but having like that teamwork environment is probably was a really good decision from that perspective too eh I think so. I really, really enjoy it. I really like my team. So that obviously helps. Um, but yeah, that's the main way I connect with people these days. I mean, it's still through a screen because I work from home. Um, and my team is like mainly located in the US. So it's not like I'm really making these real like I'm probably never going to see them in real life. <laughs> but you're still able to bond over video or even just chatting with someone. It's just yeah, it's just feels a little bit less isolating even just as I mentioned like the teamwork when you're working on something and not just feeling like you're alone like that's that's it like you know uh, it's nice to be able to reach out for help if you run into a problem or things like that it's cool I like it (laughs) I love that because it yeah you are so right when you said that about you know being an entrepreneur especially in a small business where it is just you is a very lonely experience 
And it's like, you can have fellow entrepreneurs, like other people who you befriend that you can have these conversations with, but it's not like, it's not like you, like a coworker environment, you know, where, as you're mentioning, you could just reach out to someone in the day and yeah, it's a little bit of a different setting. Yeah. And you're also busy. Like what? It's so funny because all, most of my friends are small business owners and I will go months and months and months without seeing some of my friends because you get in the season you know if they're like they make candles for example and it's like fall and winter like I I don't see those friends I don't right so it's like it's good to have them but then you don't really see them that often too because we're all just so busy and we work 24 7 pretty much (laughs) oh yeah yeah I I get that for sure (laughs) yeah so walk me back to the beginning about, because I'm really interested in, in that idea of, you know, you, you are an entrepreneur, you, you do identify with being that, but then to make that decision to actually become employed while you were also like doing some of that stuff on the side, what was that like for you? Yeah. Um, it, so yeah, I just, I made the decision to just, I just needed that structure that stability that consistency in my life um and I was kind of at that point you know I've I've started um multiple businesses now I just kind of know what's worth my time and what may not be worth investing as much time there's just not going to be that return there so at that point um I felt like I was ready to take those little businesses that I have and almost just like turn them as more like little hobbies. Like I truly do enjoy doing this stuff, but um, it just wasn't giving me the return that I was hoping for. Mm -hmm. So I I just knew I had to go get like that job and create that structure and then still have, like, I still have a lot of things on the go. I am working on minimizing that as well though. Um, I think, you know, the more it's hard, it's definitely hard to get rid of things once you have them on your plate. Like I go back and forth on some of my businesses and I've already closed once. And then I'm like, oh gosh, like, am I just that person that starts a business and closes it now? (laughs) There's that pressure there, even though it's not really doing much for me right now. (laughs) Um, But yeah, no, it's, it's at, at this point, my job is definitely my main focus. And I've even been pursuing like little, like just like educating myself, I guess, on that field even more. So I'm doing little courses here and there uh, to continue to progress in that industry, I guess, that I'm in. And we'll see what happens with my little like side projects, I guess, little side businesses now. Um, but you know, I have a few of them and at the end of the day, I'm probably just going to keep the ones that are like worth it, that are bringing in a return and the ones that aren't, unfortunately, it's just, it's draining. And I'm definitely at a point in my life that I don't want to work 24 seven. Like Mm -hmm. I actually want to finish my job at 5 PM and go spend the evening with my boyfriend, like have a nice dinner. I don't want to have to take 30 minutes to like make a meal really quick and then get on my personal laptop, like switch from my computer laptop to my personal laptop and work for another three, four, five hours. You know, I just don't really want that lifestyle for myself anymore. Yeah, I understand that. It's it's like it mm-hmm. seems okay at the time, but after a while, it definitely starts to not be as okay anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's very draining. And I just I've realized through all of this, I'm definitely not that person that can just grind it out like forever and ever. It will take a toll on my health. And, you know, most of these businesses have come like I've started from me trying to like be healthy, like eat healthy food. And um, so and I'm like, wait a minute, this is very counterproductive because you know my health is usually my top priority. And then by just absolutely draining myself all the time and, and being stressed out, I'm definitely not, um, you know, benefiting my health. So yeah, so definitely something that I'm trying to work on is just do less, just take more time for yourself. I'm 
you, I'm sure you can totally resonate with this, but you're so used to being busy all the time that once you do finally take some time off, you feel guilty a little bit. Yeah. It feels weird. Like you're, or there's something wrong. I know. I tell my like, boyfriend, I'm like, what do you, what do you, if you don't have three businesses, like, what do you do in the evening? Like, what do you should, like make dinner, like watch TV? I'm like, what do you do? Like, what, what do people do? <laughs> like, yeah. if you don't have like, a few businesses on the side. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny but it's just getting used to like being just doing nothing is completely okay Mm -hmm. and I need to remind myself of that because I feel like anytime I'm not doing something I definitely feel guilty yeah I I understand that it's I feel like it's hard to kind of get out of that mentality too when it's like so ingrained and you know how one might operate in the day (laughs) that like go 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 yeah Mm -hmm. And we all do it. And that's definitely become almost the standard, you know, that like hustle mentality, but Mm -hmm. I'm definitely all for trying to shift that around and relaxing more because that's definitely when I'm like my happiest and my healthiest, like my gut right now is not happy. Like it's too much. I have too much on the go and like, I can just feel it that, that stress is impacting my gut and then like it just it it snowballs right so um yeah yeah it's like those physical manifestations of of things that maybe because it it sounds to me like you're a little bit like me too where it's like I won't stop until I'm starting to physically be burdened by the the effects of stress 100 percent yeah yeah Yeah, uh, until your body like literally steps in and says, you know what, <laughs> this isn't sustainable and we have got to work on changing a few things. It's it's sad that we get to that point. Like I, I feel like that hustler mentality is is slowly starting to disintegrate. Like I see more and more people challenging it. Um, but it's like we we still, so many of us got so deep like into that belief system of you know, work hard, play hard. Like, you know, if you're sitting, then you're being lazy type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. To try to pull yourself back out of it. <laughs> 100%. And I love that, that shift in mentality is happening. Um, like the, the company I work for as well, like they really encourage taking time off. Um, and we, we, I feel like I've, we get a good amount of paid time off and it's encouraged. They really encourage you to take it. Uh, things like that. So I, I love seeing that within the the company I work for as well. well that's incredible. Yeah. I've noticed with you too on your Instagram. I'm not gonna lie. I don't follow like I don't pay attention to a lot of people's stuff on Instagram, and it's nothing against them. <laughs> it's it's more like I find I get bogged down by a lot of it. And sure. uh, your your account is one of the accounts that I actually enjoy seeing because I noticed that. Um, you like just the other day you were creating a painting, weren't you? Yeah. Well, last yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. I did, that like what everyone's doing with the like plaster on the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I am not an artsy person at all. Like zero artistic talents here. Um, and I was like, you know what? I want to do this. I just went to like winners, grab a, like a canvas and went to Home Depot, grabbed some supplies. And I was like, I'm going to try this. It's really fun. <laughs> I love that. And it's that, it's that element of um, creativity, you know, of like feeling as if you can create whatever that may be. Like maybe that's writing for someone. Maybe it's like, you know, being musical or, you know, something, right. That may not necessarily be directly re- like, there's no, there's no end to it. It's not a means to an end type of type of thing so I thought yeah I love that you started doing that stuff yeah it's been more like definitely when it comes to my social media it's been way more chill and there hasn't like I remember the days when I was posting you know post every single day you got to stay relevant post like a million stories a day document your entire <laughs> day, like day-to-day essentially even just posting I was posting multiple new recipes a week and that meant I had to be in the kitchen a lot like you don't just like that recipe doesn't just like magically come together as well there's sometimes a lot of uh, takes it like you try trial and error 
things like that. Like it was so much. And now, as you mentioned, I still have that, I still get that creativity, um, like fulfilled from it. Uh, but I'm just like, what doing whatever like even um I've just been creating little like reels and TikToks of like my weekend and that feels like really nice but it's not I don't know yeah I'm, I, th I think my my content's really going to start shifting or it already kind of has shifted to just like whatever I want to post on there it's not really going to be on brain anymore of like you know Tang and health which is essentially like healthy recipes and workouts like I I doubt I'll really be posting any of that I'm still gonna I'll still like a share on my stories when I find products that I like health food products that I really like because that is something that I, I really enjoy mm -hmm. um like going to the grocery store and like looking for new products like it's actually like a hobby of mine um <laughs> but other than that I'm probably just gonna post like random art projects and randomly you know went for a drive on the eastern shore and like things like that yeah, no real structure or agenda to my content anymore. And I think that's so nice to see, you know, where, because it's, in all honesty, I, I mean, with my experience with social media and just seeing how, you know, what I, what I like, what kind of content I actually resonate with and what kind of content I realize that maybe I don't so much. Um, it's kind of like the, and I don't know, we're, we're being a little philosophical here, but it's, it's the energetics or the energy behind the intention of the post, mm. you know, that I see or that I'm more interested in. And I think that's with you right now. It's like, I've really noticed that with, you know, the stuff that you're sharing where I'm like, Oh, wow. Like that's so inspiring that, Oh, she's like creating art. Like that's amazing. You know, it's not just like, you know, constant work, work, work all the time. It's, it's, it's inspiring on a whole other level which is, you know, so nice to see on social media. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they're, well, again, I think it's shifting towards that. But mm -hmm. yeah, it is really refreshing to see that type of content. I completely agree. That's the content that I, I gravitate towards as well. Yeah. So you're a manifester in human design. Yeah. Do you pay much attention to your human design stuff? Like how involved are you in, in learning about it? Not, not that much. I follow a few like Instagram accounts that gives me a few things and I'm like, oh yeah, that kind of sounds like me, but I, I've never like gone deep into it because there's like, there's like that chart, like those numbers. I don't even know what yeah. that is, but I feel like you can really go deep into it. I just did like my birthday or my birth time and date. And then it gave me my human design and that was kind of it I was like oh yeah that sounds about right <laughs> moved on. but I love it because you are the same human design right mm -hmm. like yeah and you'll you'll post stuff and I'm like oh my gosh yes like <laughs> I resonate with that so much or that's totally me or something like that but I don't know yeah I definitely maybe if I you know get rid of a couple more businesses I'll have time <laughs> to <laughs> start looking into that a bit more <laughs> Well, it's, it's interesting for, for me to like knowing a little bit more of, of what I know now about human design and then like listening to you talk about your entrepreneurial experience and, you know, where you were and where you are now and just, yeah, some of the things that kind of you touched on of like, you know, bringing these ideas to life, but not having like, like that, that ability to perhaps uh, maintain it or sustain it long term of like getting experiencing that burnout, which I mean, any design type can, but I just found it really interesting how you were talking about that stuff. <laughs> and isn't it for our design, isn't the, don't they say like you kind of work just like you can be really productive for a chunk of time and then you just like crash? Yeah. And so, like, usually that entrepreneurial like lifestyle will work better for you, I guess, in that way, because obviously I just I can't just like work really hard at my job for a week and just be like uh sorry guys next week I'm not going to be and I'm feeling a little off yeah <laughs> you no know? but so that but I definitely saw that in um in my businesses like I would have weeks where I was just so productive mm -hmm. go like full out full speed and then the next week I'm like burnt out so I need the whole week to recover and I yeah nothing accomplished for the week so I feel like I remember reading something about that and I'm like oh my gosh yeah that's 100% me but again, that that job now kind of holds me accountable that I can't just maybe have some rest for a week. So it's yeah. like teaching you a tool of how to like work through 
that like yeah. was almost like burnout types of experiences <laughs> yeah because my workload is like evenly distributed right? yes. I'm just like oh here's a project I'm going to try to finish it in like two days where it's realistically you might have like you should have taken like three months to do it or something like that like right with my businesses that's what I did like I had an idea and then I just like didn't want to sleep until that idea was completely like executed and everything was finished up like that's how better mix started like once I decided my baking mix company right now once I decided I was launching that that was launched like in record time because I just didn't want to stop yes so, um but whereas with my job right now like there, that's just that's not how the system works um so I don't know it's like trying to figure out how how to take like that type of energy and put it into like a more a consistent form but still honoring the fact that like you are this particular like you operate this particular way right whereas yeah. some days you know I'm gonna need a bit more rest than, than others I guess um, yeah yeah that makes complete sense um yeah that's super interesting so yeah. I I want to hear more about your better mix please yeah for sure absolutely um, yeah, I really, I really do love Better Mix. Uh, it's been challenging again because of the like pandemic and everything. Um, but essentially, I created a grain-free baking mix uh, company. Uh, we have some, you know, chocolate chip cookie mix, brownies. Uh, we recently launched a vanilla cake and cupcake. We have pancakes as well, and everything is super clean ingredients. Essentially, what I would be making in my own kitchen, you know, some super simple ingredients like some almond flour, some coconut flour, coconut sugar as a sweetener, um, and then add, you know, some kind of oil and eggs. Super simple. But if you if you want to create that, usually, you know, you got to go out and get all those ingredients. There's are not always ingredients that you'll have in your pantry. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to create a product that was much easier to make almost too easy like I whip up a batch of cook like a batch of chocolate chip cookies like too often probably <laughs> so easy and like I'm obsessed with that's definitely my favorite product um out of all our our mixes and I'm like oh my gosh you can't just make cookies all the time <laughs> but yeah it's uh yeah it's great um you know we sell online um ship Canada wide it's great it's it's much more shelf stable which I love <laughs> um and we work with actually a social enterprise it's just outside of Halifax they do all the products for us and this enterprise is really awesome they like employ people that have some kind of barrier to the workforce uh so they're just like such a great group of people and they put so much care and love into the product um so i i love working with them on that so yeah they, they make my life a little bit easier for sure and and yeah that's that's kind of that's kind of better mix yeah <laughs> so i know you kind of already touched on it uh where you know where when bites ended and then this idea of better mix what was it exactly that was your like light bulb moment of like i have got to create this business for better mix yeah yeah I'm trying to think back what happened I, I was at a point it was about like a year ago that I, I started better mix and I definitely had a little bit more time on my hands which is just like dangerous for me <laughs> like, I'm trying to like give myself more time but then I'm like create something like even just the the, the art piece I did yesterday I'm like I could sell these <laughs> yeah <laughs> no you're not turning this into a business it's just a nice little art project like you don't have to sell everything you create you know yeah you can't keep uh, things a hobby <laughs> um and yeah I I think I was probably as like most of my ideas come is like for for like a product that I want and I probably just wanted a baking mix that was nice and clean and that tasted good there are definitely some on the market but it's I rarely see health food products that tick all the boxes for me that are like clean ingredients that also taste good, that are convenient to make, that don't require like a million ingredients, things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, and I, I did miss like the, I think at that point, I was like, I really miss running a company like Bites, like a health food product business. So I think all of those, those thoughts came together and I was like, all right, let's start a baking mix company. 
And then, yeah, I went in a few days and like, okay, we got the name, we got the branding, packaging, design. And I was like in the kitchen, just testing a million batches of brownies, cookies and all those things. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. The amount of anyone, I was like, does anyone want like a batch of brownies? <laughs> yeah, please take these from me. <laughs> more of this, like it was, yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's hilarious. So, so you found like a deficiency basically, and you, and you created something that you wanted and that's kind of how better mix started. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Okay. Uh, it's always for like, yeah, something that, I mean, I definitely did like, I do some type of like some market research, but at the end of the day, like, I don't think I would ever create a product that I'm not going to benefit from. Like I yeah. love products that solve problems for a lot of people, but definitely also myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And I, I love that too. I love that you just said that. Cause like, I, I feel like there's a, there's a world of like, find the deficiencies mm-hmm. and make businesses out of those or find your own deficiencies <laughs> that you wish that this thing existed and then, and then go do that. Like I just those... always assume there has to be a ton of people like me too. Right. I'm like, yeah. you'd be the only one that feels this way. So let's just do it. Yeah. And I mean, I love that idea. I think it's incredible. Like even too, it's, I mean, the only, the only company that I can think of that it would be Bob's Red Mill. And even Mm -hmm. then it's, it's like what you created was still something that is individually unique. Right. Yeah. Definitely like different speaking to kind of a different audience. Um, Yeah. With better mix, you know, branding and like, don't get me wrong, love Bob's Red Mill, use a lot of yes. their products. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's not really like a branding that speaks to me. I, I'm like, I just love branding and I love, you know, a good brand. And that that will definitely get me to buy products is yeah. the branding of uh, the company. Um, so it's, I've never really been like attracted to their branding or anything. It just, as you mentioned, they're kind of one of the only options out there. Yeah, so there's definitely so- room. Yeah, there is for sure. So did you create your own branding as well? I did. Yeah. Just hopped on Canva and yes. added. You know what I mean? I love Canva. Obviously for that, it just makes me feel like a designer that I am obviously not, but like, <laughs> like, I feel so powerful in there. I can do anything. And um, so it's such a great tool, obviously, for anyone that's running a business, whether it's a food product or anything, you need Canva in your life. Yes. Um, it can do so much. And yeah, I just like created the brain. Yeah, I, I love like the branding. And I feel like half the time when I start a new business is it's because I get so excited about the branding. So if mm-hmm. I had to like even like go back and start like school and everything all over, I'd probably consider like that career path. A hundred percent. That's so funny you said that. I mean, that exact same way. I was like, man, I wish I had gone into graphic design or like, I wish that I had known or understood that that was actually a thing <laughs> like 15 years ago, you know? I had no clue what I was doing 15 years ago. No, not a clue. I'm still going right now, but like, <laughs> getting better. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I feel you there. So with Better Mix, do you, is it just on, on its own online shop or do you have uh, wholesale accounts or stockists? How does that work? Yeah, for sure. So we do have our uh, online shop. So it's bettermix.ca. And then uh, we also sell locally in Halifax. So we have a few stores like Honey and Ginger, for example, in Larry Utech and Bedford, they carry our product. Um, so yeah, there's a few different ways you can get your hands on Better Mix. You can, if you're not located like locally, you can order it and then we ship Canada wide. If you are local, we offer delivery and then obviously in retailers as well. So yeah. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really interested to try these chocolate chip cookies. They're so good. Like I, I had, I had one this morning, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love like, that. I don't like, I don't, I, they're so good with just like a coffee. Like if I have some, usually I'll make them in the evening. Um, as like a, a treat or something like a post dinner, a little sweet treat. Like that's kind of my vibe. Yeah. And like you open the fridge first thing in the morning and you see it and you're having a coffee and you're like, oh, but this is going to go so, like, it's going to pair so well with coffee that you just, I don't know, I don't have that um, control, I guess. I just, I end up having a cookie <laughs> for breakfast. 
<laughs> but it's Sunday, you know, it's, it's all good. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So what would you say to kind of wind down this conversation? Some, some words of advice or tips for multi-passionate entrepreneurs? Ooh, great question. Okay. Um, I mean, oh, that's a good one. I'm t- honestly, I would just say like, listen to your body as much as possible. Um, as we talked about, like your body will tell you when it's too much. Um, yeah, listen to your body. Don't like compensate yourself as much as possible. I know it's not always possible when you're you're starting something off. Um, you know, you got to put in that sweat equity, but um, you know, it's not going to be sustainable long term. So have that solid, just like business plan, and make sure that at some point you are going to start compensating yourself for your time. Um, what else, Frank? We talked about so much. This whole chat was like I had a lot of tips. Now I'm like, ooh, what else? So, <laughs> just listen to your body. Don't like you're you're not a machine. Like you're a human. Um, and there's nothing you're gonna create that's gonna be as like worth more than like your health or anything like that, right? So just yeah. take it for yourself and it's easier said than done, of course, because I'm I'm not even like fully able to do that right now. But yeah, like what you know, I remember when I was doing bites, I was working so hard. Like even my relationships were taking a toll and stuff like that. It's just like I look back and I I I used to listen to this podcast too, where it's um what is it? It's like how I built this or something like that. And a lot of entrepreneur, like a lot of these like big 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 company uh, CEOs they look back and they're like, well, I didn't really like see my kids growing up and like things like that. So it's like, is it really worth it? So I guess, yeah, something to keep in mind as you start (laughs) these projects. (laughs) Yeah, no, I totally get that. And I I think too, something that just listening to your journey and experience as well, that I mean, I think is worth bringing up one, one last time is that, you know, building a business does take time. Mm. And you, you can like, you know, (laughs) dig yourself into the ground type of thing with, with the amount of stress and work and responsibility that you can put on yourself to make it grow. But that added pressure of, of, of trying to make the, the business perform from a financial perspective so that you can just, you know, live your life period. Um, I think can add, can add this extra layer of almost making the business seem like a burden. Um, And I, I I really love how you were so open to, to being like curious enough to seek employment with someone Mm -hmm. with an employer that you really enjoy and that you're learning a lot from at the same time, while you're also working on, you know, doing this entrepreneurship stuff on the side and finding this, like working on trying to find a balance for it. So I think that something for me, just, I commend you <laughs> for doing that. Cause I, I think it's incredible that you've done that. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's yeah. It, there's nothing wrong with, I think, yeah, we, we all feel like we're, we're failing in our business if we almost like take that step back and seek yeah. employment, but it, it's really not like, I feel like that was one of the best decisions I've made in the last like four years. So yeah, no, that's, that's amazing. So thank you for sharing your story with us. Of course. It's my pleasure. Yeah. It's also a great opportunity for us to catch up because we haven't yeah. chatted in a little while aside from just from Instagram, the odd time. Cause I absolutely love, I <laughs> love your IG stories. Oh, they make me laugh. <laughs> oh, good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, this was really great. I'm glad we got to catch up. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Tanya. I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast episode just as much as I did. I hope you're inspired if you're an entrepreneur or if you're looking for different directions and what you're doing with your career to take some insight and some lessons from Tanya and her experiences. If you guys would like to learn more about Tanya, or if you'd like to follow along with Better Mix, 
Uh, there's more information about Tanya and Better Mix, as well as a special discount code in the show notes below.